So far, we have seen the raw basics of our rigging in Lightwave, hierarchy, space, rotations, and so on. And what these really constitute are the environment in which our rigs operate. They are, if you like, the laws of physics that govern how our rigs will behave, and how motions as a whole will behave in Lightwave. Once we understand this environment which we're operating in, then the next step is to understand the tools which we will actually use to create the kind of effects and motions that we're looking for. Of course, the tools section of this training will go in depth into all of the different tools that we've got, the detail of their uses, and the common techniques that we will want to be using with them. But for the minute, in this video, I just want to do a quick roundup of the tools as a whole, so as we all understand what is there in preparation for the later sections. Obviously, we have items themselves, which aren't really tools, but these are the things that all of our motions and rig setups will be working upon, and we need to use those appropriately, of course. But when we have items in our scene, what we will be applying our motions to, and what the tools will effectively be applied to, are the coordinates and values of these items. So, let's start out here in our graph editor. The first tool that we have are expressions, which are a way of instructing what the given value for a channel is. For those of you who are unfamiliar, let me just take a minute to quickly explain what an expression is. An expression, which many may often call an equation, and quite erroneously so, I must point out, is basically a way of describing relations. For instance, the good old Pythagorean theorem that I'm sure we're all familiar with, a squared plus b squared equals c squared for the lengths of the sides of a right-angled triangle. This is not an equation. It doesn't have a solution. What it does instead is express a relationship, informing us that the square of the length a plus the square of the length b will be equal to the square of the length c. It expresses something. And that, in essence, is what our expressions here in Lightwave will do. They're kind of like writing out little math equations, but really they are expressions because they link the value of one thing to the value of something else. So you will get a value from something, and you will apply the expression to the channel of another item or to another channel in the same item. When this is this, that is that, and so on. For convenience, there's the builder, which will help get you started and gives you sort of a bare-bones frame for expressions, from which you can select the appropriate channels or values for driving whatever it is you're driving. Next up, staying here in Graph Editor, we have a simple motion modifier. This allows us to apply various simple modifiers to an item's coordinate value channel, such as, say, noisy, which, as we can see here, modifies our curve with a noisy parameter, and there are various little tools in there. Next, we have the Motion Options panel, which are motion options for all of our items. We have motion modifiers available here, which are, again, simple little motion tools, effectively plugins that help control our motion. Things such as Jolt that create a jolting behavior, Gravity that makes things drop, Textured motion for letting a texture drive the motion of an item. And nodal motion, which, similar to expressions, allows us to build up networks of nodes that again describe a flow of values for affecting our eventual motion on the item. We then have the main tools on the options panel, such as things like target and pole, commonly known as aim constraints in other packages that allow us to point one item toward another. We have the controllers and limits tab, where we have separate tabs for the position, rotation, and scale parameters of an item, and where we can apply different types of motion control. Again, such as the point at target, inverse kinematics, which we will see, alignment to the path that the object is traveling on, or same as item, which is a simple classic constraint that allows us to take one item's values and have another follow them pretty much directly as we see here. Now folk will talk about expressions and modifiers and constraints and so on. It can be handy just to think of everything as a constraint if you like, since essentially these things all do the same job. If we're using an expression to link the motion of one thing to the value of something else, we are essentially constraining it. We are constraining one item's values to another item's values in some sort of way. Obviously in expressions with transforms or multipliers or addition or anything else, whereas of course with the same as item, just a block direct constraint. You can think of IK as a constraint, and we will see IK shortly, a way of constraining the motion of a chain of items based on another item. 
And certainly if you look around computer graphics at different packages, you will see the word constraint used in these sorts of ways quite often. People will talk about an aim constraint, an IK constraint, a path constraint, and so on. And as far as motion control goes in Lightwave, that is basically everything. Between the graph editor and the motion options panel, we have all of the tools at our disposal for controlling motions and creating links of motion between one thing and another. What this shows, of course, is that the number of places we have to go within the interface to set things up is quite limited. It's quite compact and quite tidy. And that's a good thing. We don't have panels open left, right and centre trying to pick out and apply values and so on, which helps reduce the learning curve a fair bit. And the number of tools available isn't that great. What we will see as we go on in this training is that it's the creative combination of these tools that let us create fantastic and functional rigs. Obviously enough, motion control isn't the full story, because what are we going to be ultimately animating or posing or trying to control the motion of in Lightwave? That's going to be objects, which are meshes. And of course, all object items have properties in layout, where what we're going to be caring about are the deformations, how the mesh actually deforms along with the motion controllers that we have set up. And so in our object properties panel deform tab, we have access to these tools and controls, such as morph mixer, different methods of displacement mapping, and again, additional displacement plugin tools which are available here. Of course, what we will most often want is some manner of deformer tool, and for the most part, this is going to be the bone in Lightwave, which are again just items, and will have motion options, and which have their own individual properties panel for controlling how they will deform object meshes. There are two major types of bones. There's the z-axis bone, and there's the joint, which looks like this fella here, and they have their own individual settings, which of course we will see as we progress. One such setting being of course the weight map, which is a way of telling Lightwave which areas of a mesh are controlled by which bone. And our weight maps are set up in Modeler here in this fashion for sectioning off portions of our character or whatever mesh it is we happen to have to work with certain bones. Then furthermore in Modeler, in Lightwave 11.5, we also have Genoma, which contains either entire rigs or sub-parts of rigs that can be stitched together and when these are brought into layout they will create for us rigs with IK and constraints and so on set up for us. For the most part reasonably simpler and not so high functioning rigs but quick and easy and also most importantly just plain old light wave rigs using the good old tools that we've already looked at here of constraints IK and so forth which means that extending or customizing them is totally possible as none of this stuff relies on any kind of specialist tool or plugin which you otherwise don't have access to. And that is pretty much what we have here. These are the tools that we have available to us in Lightwave and further in this training we will see all of the individual details of each tool plus of course plenty of examples of using them creatively to get exactly the results that we're after.